did you learn? Did you listen naturally, or do you ha did you have to learn to listen? I learned. I learned. You learn to listen. It's not natural. Can you teach listening? Good question. I often say to young actors, acting, it's simple. You do two things. You speak and you listen. You talk and you listen. The listening is the hard part. The talking, you can do that. It's hearing. You talk. I hear, but am I listening? And, and if you define, for example, if you take a singer and say, here's the first line you sing, what does the line mean? Not, not vocally, just what does the line mean? And particularly in, in opera where lines are short and, and made short cuts, unless the singer can know what the line means in his or her own language, he's not going to be able to sing the line. The moment they understand it, be it in English or Italian or German, the moment they understand it, then they can apply the understanding to the note because because words uh, are the influence of the notes. It's not notes that dictate an interpretation. It's words. It's word that dictates how you sing the note. It's not the other way around. Can you give me an example? Um, sure. Um, Bohem. Well, every, do you know Bohem? Everybody knows Bohem. It's a long, tedious opera <laughs> that manipulates you into <laughs> any, never mind. But she, Musetta, um, sings a line, quando men vo, et cetera, et cetera. When people see me on the street, they stop and listen. Well, how does she mean when people see me on the street? Does she mean that in a sensuous way? Does she mean that because I'm dressed so well? How does she mean that? So if it's in a sensuous way, say, then the quando men vo is going to come out very different than you're saying fact. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a little like an actor saying, I have, to, I have to have a sense of what is going on from my character and what I want in order to say that line. That's absolutely right. And that's what singers don't know, what basic actors do know, you know. Because they think of it as music as opposed to... <laughs> Right. Where am I coming from? Where am I going to? What do I want? What stops me? All those questions are um, new to singers. And when you introduce them, it's, it's, it's light bulbs going bing, 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 because suddenly they realize if they know exactly what they're saying, it's easier to sing. So why is it new to singers? Because Was the 19th and 18th and 17th century tradition that you didn't have to know, you just had to do music? You have a coach pianist, coach, not a voice teacher, a coach, who coaches you on how to sing it. You sing this phrase this way, this, you do this legato, you do this staccato, you put the emphasis here. So singers, like ballet dancers, they just take it in and memorize it and that's how they do it. Why is the coach coaching them that way? Because Be that's what the coach has learned. And the coach's teachers. And the traditions the go on and them. on and on, right? Or you'll get somebody who's a coach, and their coach was a coach, and their coach was a coach who worked with Verdi. So it goes passing down, but you know, as it passes down, it gets not so accurate. So coaches learn, and then they teach that to the singers, and the singer does it. Well, the moment you make a singer think, the moment you challenge a singer to think, it opens up a whole new world. And that's the exciting part of teaching opera singers. But it's 2013. I thought this was done in the 1970s. It began in the 70s. <laughs> the opera's a conservative art form. You know that. It's 43 years conservative. I will give it another 43 and we'll be there. <laughs> no. It's, why is it so? Co it is a conservative world. You're right. It is why is opera such a conservative world? Um, I, I, I don't know the answer to that, Robert. I think there's a lot of a lot of um, reasons. Uh, the big opera houses and the big productions um, don't require a lot of subtlety because the houses are so big and if you got a 
you know, if the tenor can sing the B flat and hold it, that's fine, that's good enough. Um, the smaller houses are now saying, no, no, we need singers who can act. We need singers who are not 400 pounds. We need singers who know how to communicate. And more and more singers are, are coming out that way. I, I have some wonderful opera singers' friends, but I also go to the opera, say, in Berlin, and I see an opera, you know, the Stats Opera, and it's incredibly technically lighting, modern, and then this fellow sings an aria, and I think I'm watching 19th century acting. And you are. And you are. And as an acting student, I go, that's acting from 1860. I see the footwork, I see the position of the shoulders, I see the look. I go, that's what we see in the, in the etchings, in the books. That's so absolutely. why in 2011 in Berlin am I seeing a performance from 1865? Uh, part of the reason could be that nobody cares about the acting, or it's a director's theater or a designer's theater, and everything is about the production, not the people. Uh. I mean, opera for me is a, I mean, uh, uh, Peter Brook, right? When he did his Carmen, or he did um, his um, Indian piece, I've forgotten, it was all about the people had nothing to do with production. And so you were riveted because you had singers who could act it, and at the same time, they were singing this gorgeous stuff. So you were riveted by it. Yes. Uh, but, you know, the big houses, you got the electronics. Look at the Met when they did the, the, the ring cycle with all the uh, electronics that broke down constantly. And sing Hodges production. Yes. Yeah and singers standing on something and it moved and they didn't know what to do. How do you act like that? I mean, how, what do you do? You're in terror of your life. But the production was everything, not the singers. Why is that, do you think? I think it's left over from early um, 20th century. Um, when, historically, when you go back to America in the early 20, uh, early 1900s, late 19th century, early uh, late 1800s or early 1900s, opera singers were stars. And by that, I mean there were recordings, the early recordings were made, sheet music was printed, and the population were buying the arias and the operas as sheet music, the way you would go out and buy a pop song now. And it was wonderful because um, uh, opera uh, tunes were used in all kinds of ways. They were used in vaudeville shows. Op opera was popular in, in a real sense of popular. Then came the Met and the Astors, etc., and they wanted European opera. And we're now talking 1880s, 1890s? 1900s in there. In there. And they wanted European opera because that was the prestige, European opera. Well, you can't have Caruso's face on a piece of sheet music in a pop store. That's not good. <laughs> Gone. And suddenly it became the snob. And as part of my research, I snuck into the Governor General's ball and danced with Pierre Trudeau. And that was, it became a scene in the play where Margaret and, and Pierre danced together.